Reading is the key to English. It lets you experience things outside of your own life. And I don't mean being good at reading because we can all become good at something with practice. I mean being a keen reader. And you might tell me that you don't like reading and I'll tell you that you just haven't found the right book yet. And the staff here at Teasdale will help you to choose books that are uh, interesting to you and that perhaps will lead you on to do even more reading. One of the texts that you will study in Year 7 is Susan Cooper's King of Shadows. The story revolves around an orphaned boy who takes part in a Shakespearean production with an elite theatre company in London. One night after he falls ill with what appears to be the bubonic plague, he falls asleep and travels back to the Elizabethan era. Once there, he meets the real-life Shakespeare and comes to terms with the loss of his parents. So why do we study King of Shadows and why is it such an important text? First of all, it includes Shakespeare's Sonnet 116, which is a poem, and therefore allows you to gain insight into poetry. Linking to that, it is also heavily based on Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a play, and therefore allows you to understand another area of literature, all within a novel. It has an exciting storyline, which includes time travel, and at some point, some gore. We learn a lot about Elizabethan England from this text, and therefore it incorporates history and allows you to understand what life was like during Shakespeare's time. There is the opportunity for you to show your dramatic side while reading as a class, as this text incorporates British accents, American accents, and it also allows for you to use a booming voice as if you are on Shakespeare's stage. Lastly, it allows you to have many chances to explore Cooper's choice of language and to analyse why this is such an engaging text. I bet you can't wait to read it. William Shakespeare is probably the most famous writer in all of English literature and possibly the most famous writer in the entire world. And Sonnet 116 is one of his most famous poems. And it's so popular because it talks about realities of love. So it talks about the real version of love, not that sickly sweet love hearts and teddy bears version, but it talks about the version that endures even as you grow old, even as time passes, that if you fall in love, you, you love each other no matter what, and that doesn't change. And it's so popular because that's what love is to a lot of people. It's, it's love that stays the same no matter what. Shakespeare. Um, Shakespeare used to perform in a theatre called The Globe. The Globe was where performances took place, so things like Romeo and Juliet, we've got Twelfth Night, Midsummer Night's Dream, and they were performed by men called the Chamberlain's Men. Now, I emphasise the word men because women weren't allowed to perform. So any role, such as Juliet, Lady Macbeth, they had to be played by young boys. Um, and it was a few years later when women were actually allowed in. Uh, during the day, because obviously they had to um, use the natural light, uh, they used special effects. Now, special effects are very different to the special effects that we have today. So things like fireworks, cannon was set off once, set it on fire once. Um, we had trapdoors, so for heaven and hell, there would be a trapdoor at the bottom. Heaven, you would have harnesses on and you would be lifted up. Um, there would be animals, so for animal noises, there would be flowers and petals. Um, and then another one they would use would be animal blood. So that would be for death scenes, fight scenes, they'd use animal blood to make it look realistic. Um, acting wasn't really seen as being a reputable profession, but saying that, a lot of people love to go and watch it. So anybody of any wealth could go and enjoy a day at the theatre. So you would have the rich people who would be set at the top of the globe. They would have to pay more and they'd have a cushion seat. Then you'd have people who still got a seat but they wouldn't have a cushion. And then the people on the ground, they were called groundlings and they'd pay a penny to get in um, and they would really enjoy this day out. Now, they would 
um, shout and heckle if they didn't enjoy a performance. They might even throw food and drink at the actors. They were very, very vocal about whether or not they enjoyed the show. So not like the theatre today. Um, it was also quite dangerous at the theatre. So sometimes there would be, um, there might be bear fighting, there might be dog fights, pickpockets were around, there'd be drunk people everywhere. So it really was something that, you know, it's very different to the theatre today, but it sounded like a very exciting experience. Hi Year 5 and 6, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about an extract from our book that we teach you in Year 7, which is called King of Shadows, and this extract is from Chapter 6, so it's a really exciting extract, it's the bit where our protagonist, Nat, has travelled through time and has returned to Elizabethan London. Um, and he's experiencing the Globe as it would have been, the Globe Theatre then, at that time. And he, he explores, because it's from his point of view, he explores his feelings really well and it's conveyed nicely in the book. What's the same? What's different? You get a bit of insight into the differences between the two times. Um, Nat's excitement really comes across well in this extract, I think. He's really astonished at the change, yet full of anticipation as well. You get a little bit of historical information about what the Globe was like, I don't want to spoil it for you too much, but um, information about what the Globe Theatre would have been like then and how it came into being. And in general, the, the extract is really alive and really interesting. So I hope you're looking forward to studying this book with us soon. My favourite book when I was a child was this one. Smith by Leon Garfield. It's the story of a 12-year-old pickpocket in Victorian London and it's a story about reading. Smith steals a document from an old gentleman who's murdered very shortly afterwards and Smith knows the document is valuable but he has to learn to read in order to be able to solve the mystery. My favourite childhood book was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. It's the story of four siblings who were moved to the countryside during World War II for their safety. Whilst there, their youngest sibling, Lucy, steps inside the magical wardrobe which leads to the world of Narnia. In Narnia, an evil queen has made the whole place be covered with snow and it's just very cold all of the time. Also, they meet a magical lion called Aslan, who joins them in their battle against the evil queen. Give this book a go, and if you like it, luckily there's another six in the Chronicles of Narnia series that you can read. Technically I'm going against what was asked of me, but there is a book that I've not mentioned, and that is Harry Potter. I'm too old to have said that it was a childhood book, but it's amazing. Everybody should have to read Harry Potter at some point. The characters are amazing. You, it doesn't matter how many times you read them, I've just finished reading them all, so this was yesterday. And I'm still not over it, I love these. It doesn't matter how many times I pick the book up, I get taken into that journey and I'm willing the characters to, to win. Um, now, because I've got two little boys, I'm sharing that with them. They love Harry Potter. We can watch it together, we can read together, and we talk about it all together. So, you know, come on everybody, don't be a muggle, read Harry Potter. I'm here to talk to you briefly today about my favorite childhood book, which is Roald Dahl's Matilda. If you haven't read it, it's fantastic. Please read it immediately. It's all about how reading can change and transform everything. Matilda is an absolute bookworm. She eats books for breakfast, okay? Um, and she uses it as a form of escapism in relation to her fairly challenging life circumstances. And it has a lovely happy ending. Um, there's also a great film to go with it, uh, which is definitely worth a watch. Hi, Year 5 and 6. My favourite childhood book is um, possibly an old fashioned choice as far as some people are concerned, but it's actually from the famous five series by Lynn Lyon and it's book number three, Five Run Away Together. What I really like about this book, and I still really like about this book, even though I was about seven, I think, when I first read it, is that it pioneers this idea of uniting friendships. So we've got a group of young people working together in that way that means they're being very moralistic and really trying to do the right thing by 
each other and by the wider community and I like that about the Christmas line. It's got good old fashioned villains as well, antagonists in the form of Mr and Mrs Stick who try to thwart the famous mime and of course don't get away with it. And what I really love as well is the idea that they run away in that old fashioned concept of adventure. They run away and hide for a week or so on a deserted island that nobody else can access. It's full of adventure, um, mysterious signals, boats out to sea, tunnels and catacombs and it's really worth reading so have a go. My favourite book from when I was a child is The First Test by Tamara Pierce. I can't find the first one. So this is the second one in a lovely series. It's about a girl called Kel who lives um, lives in this kind of like fantastical world where she decides she wants to be a knight rather than a boring lady who sits around with a fan. So she sneaks off, so she sneaks off, she goes to, um, she goes to night school where, as in knight with a K. Um, where she learns to fight bad guys and monsters and all that sort of thing and I, I always really enjoyed that when I was a child. It's really worth the read, there's a whole series and the first one's called The First Test. Hey Year 6, we have lots of trips on offer here in the English department. I have just enough time to tell you about our London trip that we try and put on every single year. Um, we visit Shakespeare's Globe, have a really good tour and do some workshops there. We go and see two West End shows. Last year was The Lion King and School of Rock. And we also go and see um, the Victorian Albert Museum, which is a really fun experience. Make sure you get yourself involved.